Good night, criminal justice. My name is Renee Saunders. How are you all doing tonight? Oh, and professor, in regards to my ID, um, I'm strictly an online student. So when I inquired about getting an ID, they didn't tell me I needed to. So I don't have an ID. I mean, I can show you my driver's license if you want to see that. But I mean, you can also respond on the um, student text message or the app that you have. I can show you that, but as far as ID goes, that's all I can show you. Or I can show you like my Seminole State paperwork if you want to see that. I can do that too. But getting to this map versus Ohio State in 1961, Ohio case in 1961, not state. Okay, so in the case of Dory Map, whom the police believe to have been harboring a bomb suspect along with having some illegal equipment, they want to search her home. When first approaching her door, they didn't have a warrant, which she surely shut down as she should, because I mean, I'm not letting the police into my space to rummage through my belongings and my goods without having some kind of legal permission slip to do such, okay? So, power to her for that. So she shut that down completely, and then hours later, the police officer still came back in pursuit of searching her home, trying to find the fugitive. And they came back with a squadron of police and a warrant. But as soon as they kicked down her door, because they didn't open it at this point, they kicked it down, hinges and all, kicked down her door. She grabbed the warrant that she saw, and before she could even take a look at it, they had arrested her for being belligerent, disrespectful, and for causing, a, and for causing chaos. Okay, I I am siding with Miss Ma with Miss Map here because I mean that's just wrong. You're not gonna barge into my belongings with a warrant. I try to take a look at it. You're gonna dismiss me from taking a look at my look at this warrant and think I'm not gonna be somewhat violent towards you and your squadron about coming inside my space. Okay, so just a little background on Miss Map. Miss Map clearly was someone who was a bit of an outlaw. I mean, you know, she rolled with the bad guys. She was involved in racketeering, um, California gold tickets, the snake that is Don King. Her boyfriend was a king racketeer. racketeer. His name was Edward, or Eddie, going for short. Um, so she clearly was involved in some, in, some serious, in some serious stuff, you know, tend to probably have a bit of edge to her. And getting back to the story, so while they were inside her place looking for, for the fugitive, they didn't find the equipment they'd been looking for, Another, another sub, suspect that, that they um, accused her of harboring, but what they did find was other personnel, and they found other personnel, and what looked like was a trunk of pornographic materials. Wait a minute, okay? Miss Map, Miss Map, Miss Map. I mean, you know, I, I figured you got down with the bad guys, but girl, you was rolling like that in the 60s where everything was like illegal and wrong to do and you were a woman doing that? Sweetheart power to you, okay? I'm not here to judge her for her intimate fluid, for, for, for being fluidly intimate. That's her business. If she's curious about whatever it is she's curious about in those times, you know, girl, more power to you. But that was her business. And so with the police officers finding these belong these pornographic materials, they arrested her. She then appealed her case to the Ohio Supreme Court and lost. Well, but then she didn't stop fighting. The Supreme Court's decision of 1961 is where she then took her case next, where Chief Justice Earl, who was residing over the court, ended up siding with Miss Mapp in a six to three vote. Power to Miss Mapp, okay? She fought hard, she got what she wanted. And good for her okay she fought basically on the rights of the fact that her First Amendment which is freedom of expression was completely violated which is true because I mean she at that point had all right to express herself freely and to be as curious about what she wanted to be as curious about whether it be animals sea fish or the pornographic materials that she was into but that was her business and that was being validated but although that's what she based her case on conversation went into fourth amendment which then spoke about the 
illegal searches and seizures of any of any evidence, which came from the Weeks versus United States case in 1914 that states that illegally obtained evidence could be used in a federal could not be used in federal courts. The Ohio, the Ohio law failed to provide Miss Mapp with her Fourth Amendment protection against unreasonable searches and seizures and all evidence that obtained by searches in violation of the Constitution by the Fourth Amendment is inadmissible in a state court. So, of course, the case at that point was thrown out. The argument was still there, yes, but the case at that point was thrown out because she was right. She was right. The police officers were not allowed to go through her belongings. They were there to find a person in which they didn't find, and at that point, stepping into her belongings is now overstepping the boundaries of the warrant that you supposedly had, which is completely fine. So shout out to Miss Mapp for that. What we know about Miss Mapp, back to what I was saying, Miss Mapp is someone who seemed to be a bit, seemed to be a bit of an outlaw. She was rolling with men like Don King, racketeers involved in gambling. Of course, she had pornographic material. It is alleged that this is not her first time with a case. Her case, another case prior to this was that she was suing a well-known boxer, a boxing champion, Mr. Archie Moore, for promising to not marry her. So she was about that life. You're going to give me this ring or not. But either way, I'm going to let you know exactly what's up. I mean, we're going to drink to that too, you know, because, I mean, it's time. It's time when put, women put their foot down on certain things. And I believe that she was a bit of a trailblazer. A trailblazer, you know. Letting men know that I can play just as rough as you. You're not going to awaken my love and not think you're going to put a ring on it. If you liked it, okay. That's, what, that's all I'm saying. And so the case went on. The law was made. The case was something that was well documented. It was something that was well used after that in terms of putting the Fourth Amendment to use and exactly what it stood for. However, Miss Mapp got in some more trouble. Okay, which I mean is expected because we know the kind of woman she is. She doesn't seem to be the cookie cutter with the rules. She does what she wants to do, marks a beat of her own drum because of the kind of men that she's into. Okay, which is which is just fine on my head to judge. I'm about that wildlife as well. And in the year 1970, 13 years after the legal search that co that culminated Map versus Ohio, Miss Map was convicted of possessing twenty-five thousand dollars worth of stolen goods and drugs and went to prison until the year nineteen eighty one. All in all, Miss Map, I respect you. I respect you, I love you, I care for you, and I understand where you're coming from. Especially in a time as the 1960s where women, where women weren't exactly allowed to have an identity verse is a voice and she could do something like this, I'm proud of her for. And even speaking into illegal evidence in this current day and age where there's so much injustice that goes on in terms of the African American community, for not even on African American communities, but for people of color and minority communities where I'm sure there's plenty of situations where there's been illegal searches and Situations are never handled property, never handled proper, properly in the court of law, which is exactly why we do need to have a serious conversation amongst ourselves and amongst lawmakers about how situations are handled when it comes to justice, how they should be handled, and the fact that the times have grown and progressed so much that the current laws and constitution cannot possibly uphold to what's going on currently. There's how many amendments per law, how many amendments in different state courts, Supreme Courts, and federal justices that a conversation needs to be happening and something else needs to be drafted in order to get us to a point where people actually have some human rights and the right thing can be done and we don't have senselessness constantly going on in our environment and society. Because I mean, it's not like people aren't talking, they don't want to change. A conversation's happening, people want to change, people are marching and protesting, and we're trying to push for something greater. Thank you.